Hi everyone, Armored Pants here and I have another video for you in the American line. This is the tier 10 end of the line T57 heavy tank. And um, probably one thing you'll notice about the name is that it's a T57 heavy. And you're kind of thinking, well hold on, I've been following a medium tank line here. And yes, you'll see when we look at the text back here using blitzhanger.com that you have followed a medium tank line, but when you get to tier 10, it's a heavy tank. So um, that actually requires a change in gameplay. There are tank has different characteristics which we're going to look at now and going from a medium to a heavy is a different style of play right and um, so to go to tier 10 in this tank it is a bit of a change a change up um, in that you're going to a heavy tank change down in some respects because you lose some of the good characteristics of a medium tank and you have to adapt your play but nonetheless this, this is nonetheless this is a good tank but it's and it's not a standard heavy tank right it's sort of maybe a hevium is the best description in terms of the tank itself, I would run Coca-Cola, get that view range up to 288.2, also helps a little bit, not so much, but a little bit with the reload. The gun is an upgrade from the tier 9, you've got 120 millimeters of uh, gun here, which in the extra pen is really useful, because you're up against the biggest heavily armored tanks in Blitz in tier 10, right? You're up against the mouse, the E100, uh, the heavy Russians, etc. Um, you have a 19 second reload with calibrated shells. It's 18.6 seconds if you run gun rammer. Therefore, I would run calibrated shells, why not? Uh, with that, you get 271 millimeters of pen, which is a lot on your AP, 340 millimeters with heat, which is your promo, and you get HE, which you didn't in the tier nine tank, you get HE, and that gives you 66 millimeters of pen, which is quite high. So load that up because you can pen lights and meds with that. Muzzle velocity is 1067 meters per second, going up to 1387 meters per second with supercharge. Important point to note, guys, all shells have the same muzzle velocity, so shell management is a bit easier. I would run vertical stabilizer because even though a heavy tank you will fire a lot more when moving in this tank than you would in a standard heavy. Now uh, looking at it here um, you can see the gun depression, 8 degrees gun depression, 12 elevation, so you've got good gun alignment. Um, it meets lining up your barrel with the enemy tar tanks and targets is relatively easy. Now it kind of looks like a kind of a cartoon character with lipstick on if you look at a front on. I you know you're not going to be able to unsee that now. Um, it does 35.4 kilometers per hour, 12 in reverse, so it's significantly slower than um, the uh, tier 9, right? But then you're going from a medium to a heavy. And you need to be aware of that because it, the tank then has different characteristics, different handling characteristics. But look in terms of the armor, um, it uh, has none on the back, the same as the tank before, right? Its power to weight ratio is okay, it's better than the previous tank, but as a heavy tank though, it doesn't need to accelerate to such a high speed as the medium tank, so therefore its power to weight ratio is more effective, right? So it accelerates better to its top speed. It has poor concealment numbers, 282 meters added for a tank with 310 meters view range. Um, and you blow that completely, it goes to 302 if you fire and move. So basically you're going to be spotted very, very easily in this tank. But then it's a heavy tank, so you lose a lot of the concealment you had on the medium tank before it. Looking at the back of this tank here, you can see that like the tank before, the T5041, has no arm on the back. You are vulnerable to HE rounds, and there are big guns out there. Death Star, E100, uh, even Waffle Tractor, Tier 9 the grill they are going to roll you for a thousand plus with he rounds right into that vulnerable back spot here on the butt you can see there's virtually no armor right so you need to be really aware of that because if you go out in the open in this tank bearing in mind you're not as fast as the as your previous tier 9 medium you can get smashed and rolled for massive numbers front on though it does have some armor it has that lipstick there as you see which is a um and the good thing about this is it's good for ramming if you look at that it's almost built perfectly for ramming right the two armor plates come into a uh, point at the front of the tank and that point uh, is great for ramming because basically it produces a focal point for the kinetic energy that you've built up when moving unleashes the kinetic that potential energy into kinetic energy when you hit something bam you do a lot of damage if you hit a, a less armor tank side or back on in this like the tank before you have those um, very cool armor um, angles on the turret so you will get bounces from that plus you will get some bounces on the front particularly off those lips um, but you don't have the armor profile of a heavy tank 
of a heavy heavy tank so therefore you need to play this as a sort of a helium so we basically look at it as a mobile gun platform to move around you can do a lot of damage you can do 1200 plus alpha rolls with your burst damage so you know we utilize that it's rel it's pretty mobile for a heavy tank and um, because it, you're coming from a medium line so it's let's say a converted uh, medium to heavy tank and uh, therefore it is pretty agile has good traverse so it's good brawler but you need to count your shells of course don't go into brawl with only one shell in the magazine then you can do a lot of damage very quickly so basically in five seconds so fire 2.5 seconds fire 2.5 seconds fire so five seconds you can unload 1200 plus damage if you fire hg you can unload 16 1700 damage so basically you can clear off a tier 9 or even um, a tier 10 light or medium tank so you can do a lot of damage right but let's take a time out and let's look uh, let's look at the mini tutorial for um, using a magazine loaded um, auto loader tank right um, now I know I've looked at this before and if you follow this up you've seen this in every tank from the T60, T71 upwards right but I, I, only, I need these tank guides to stand alone so therefore I'm going to repeat it in case somebody just drops into the channel just to watch the T57 heavy guide right so I do apologize if you've seen it before but of course you can skip over it if you've watched it before if not and you're interested bear with me now so playing auto loaders okay so this line here represents how you engage the enemy when you're firing a normal tank with a normal uh, firing system so let's say you've got 5.5 second reload um like an object 140 right so you fire every 5.5 seconds or you can in theory so therefore you engage the enemy in a linear fashion right you engage them in a set linear fashion a consistent fashion throughout the game right so it's pretty simple right and that's represented by this flat um line here Auto loaders are different. Auto loaders engage the enemy in cycles. You have periods of increased activity. That means that you can engage them, uh, the enemy far more and far more effectively than you can with a standard tank with a standard operating and firing system. But then you have periods of decreased activity. That is effectively when the magazine is being reloaded and you can't do anything. You can, of course, move and scout and capture bases, but you can't fire, you can't damage the enemy. So therefore you play the tank in cycles represented here so you can uh, engage the enemy um, in a much more increased manner than a normal tank but then you also have periods of decreased activity you don't engage in a flat continuous linear fashion okay so how best to do that well and um, we're going to have a summary now in a second of how best to do that and some tips right but what you really want to do is you want to make sure that you have your magazine with uh, the full amount of shells in it as often as possible throughout the game so you maximize the number of increased activity cycles and minimize the number of decreased activity cycles and how to do that well here's some tips count your shells make sure you know how many shells are in your magazine all the time when you are reloading the magazine stay safe you can't fire at the enemy you can't damage them so don't be out from cover that is pointless you're just putting yourself out there to get hit stay safe go into cover reload in safety use the inactive time that's when you're down uh, when you're reloading uh, sorry use inactive time to reload so what would you mean by that well if you're capturing a base you know you're going to be inactive for 20 seconds or if you're moving across the map to engage the enemy you've no targets reload even if you've only got one shell fired reload so uh, because you want to have the maximum number of shells in your magazine for the maximum amount of time throughout the game so use downtime to uh, reload conversely you can use time when you are reloading to do things like base capture and moving to engage right so you know manage the time that you're inactive sensibly remember to keep your shell icon open you can tap it to reload without firing off a shell an amateur mistake made by people who are new to reloaders is they've one shell left in the magazine and they don't know this so therefore they fire off that shell and uh, this is a real mistake that uh, people who are not familiar with autoloaders make you can tap the shell icon and it reloads automatically you save your shell you save credits obviously you don't have to waste that round and of course you don't give away your position because when you fire you break camo and in this tank in particular when you fire you got your view range 
is 302 meters so therefore you can be spotted by almost everything on the map right they only have to get get within 202 meters of you to spot spot right so that's basically a sort of um a summary of how to manage um uh, an auto loader like this right um, bear that in mind and you'll have far more success when playing auto loaders so we're gonna have a look at a mastery game here to t57 um, it's black goldville um, and again as i said this is not a standard heavy tank and it's also not a medium it's somewhere in between so what i do is i play this sort of like a hevium so instead of going down the heavy channel route at c i go to support my medium and light tanks at a because i'm relatively agile for a um, heavy tank and i can bring this big um, impressive firing system into play against the light more lightly armed tanks on the left side of the map and hopefully do some more damage and help my team so i've taken up position here not front line but hopefully where i can engage the enemy um, and um, i am going to see what i can do to help my um, teammates now you can see the gun system on this is pretty good and you can see nice snapshot here on the leopard as he comes out snap bang and uh, nice alpha roll on him bang again you see the power of the autoloader there with the 2.5 seconds on the shell reload you can just snap one in bam another one bam and you've done a huge amount of damage on the leopard and uh, we've really put him into a serious amount of trouble and we're able to clear him off now i am uh, moving up now and um, i haven't um, there's a lot of enemy targets right so that's why i haven't uh, hit the auto load to reload and now i have a target and bam i'm going to slow this down for you because i want this is a bounce right and you can see here how it bounces it hits the apex of those two armor plates when i uh, was in game in real time i could not figure out how that bounced when you slow it down you can see the shell hits the apex where the two armor plates meet and actually ricochets off the angle in between the two plates shell management is extremely important whether you're playing an auto loader or not but even more important than an auto loader because every shot you fire is more precious because of the long reload time you have in your magazine switch up to hg and you can see there 527 roll bam clear him off and then back to AP. By the way, one thing I should point out is when you are recording replays um, from Blitz, you don't see the shell um, selector open. Um, so uh, in case you're wondering why I say keep your shell selector open and then I don't, you don't actually see on replays, but believe me, my shell, sele my shell selector is open the entire time. Um, I hit the shell icon here, as you see, uh, you can well you can't see because the shell selector is not open but i hit shell icon there and then i went for the full reload because i thought i would have some downtime as i move across from a to c on the map to engage the enemy and of course that downtime enables me to load up full magazine again this is magazine management making sure that i have full amount of shells loaded in my magazine so that i can do my maximum burst damage the maximum amount of times throughout the game i'm now doing what you should really do in supremacy is capture bases and um, supremacy is all about base capture and mastering tanks in supremacy is all about um, gaining xp of course and gaining xp is um significantly easier in supremacy because you gain a, la a large amount of xp that you can't gain in encounter but you can't gain in encounter battles by capturing bases but that's you know an aside it's a, just an added benefit you should really capture bases in um in supremacy as early and as quickly and as often as possible to maximize the amount of uh, chance you have of winning a game because you win a game on points in supremacy not just on damage done or enemy tanks destroyed now again you can see here um, how maneuverable i am as a heavy tank right and i'm able to do um, significant um, damage here you know you can get into a kind of a brawl and i can brawl almost not quite as well but almost as well as a medium tank and um, i decide not to um take the shot early i decide instead to wait until i have a position on his wheel um until and, and then i can just um i try to track him didn't work 
but you can see when you're in a brawl um, with an auto loader if the auto loader has a full magazine loaded you're in serious trouble and this is why I said earlier it is vital to count your shells if I had gone into that brawl with only one shell in the magazine I would be in significant trouble because I would have fired off my shell then I have to wait 20 seconds before I can fire off the next one and that WZ might even have cleared me off. Now, this is why you need to load up Pramo. Um, because you see here, I can't pin him front on. I can't really get around him. But now that Pramo's loaded up, look at the difference. Then I can pin him front on. All right, I get a bounce. It goes right off my lipstick as we looked at in the... Um, in the uh, tech spec we looked at the armor armor inspector and here look at this through the knife and needle bam using my promo to clear him off and that wins us the game some um you know what i call them blitz snobs will tell you oh you know you don't i don't need to use promo you know promo's in the game for a reason right and you know i don't use it very often but it's there it's a tool that needs to be used sometimes and believe me, front on to a mouse is the time that you need your promo, and that's what it's there for. And that extra pen is the difference between us winning and lose, probably losing that game. So don't be embarrassed about using promo or whatever. And you know, plus also it's your game, they're your credits. You know, you can use it whenever you want. You know, as I often say, you know, the fact that I'm willing to spend money to kill you is a compliment to you, right? So there you go. Mouse trap badge for taking him out, um, which is nice. Uh, mastery badge is well delivered um, and you saw there a very good I think um, example of how to play the T57 plane as a helium moving around the map good shell management good magazine management so let's have a recap of this um, pretty good um, and a tank that I like in tier 10 and um, as I said it is a good tank but it's not a medium tank and this is a strange thing because all the tanks before are medium so you need to take allowance of that when you move up to tier 10 you do get a 120 millimeter gun on it, which has better pen and you really need it. And you saw there, front on against the mouse with your Pramo, it works. Train hard, fight easy, train easy, fight hard. So what do you mean by that? Well, practice with the auto loader, play to the auto loader strengths. Don't go in without practicing. Take it out for a run in a training room or stuff like that if you haven't played one before. Manage your cycles. Be aware of the reload time in the magazine. It's 18.6 seconds if you use gun rammer, 19 if you use calibrated shells. The tank has a decent power to weight ratio. It's good for a heavy. You can saw it's pretty mobile and agile. It gets around the map. Its traverse is good, good brawler. But of course, as I said, guys, please count your shells. Don't go into a brawl with one shell in the magazine. It will not end well. Good gun alignment because of the depression and elevation. It's easy to get your tank barrel on target. It has more armor than its tier 9 as you would imagine and it's going to get some additional bounces both off the turret and off your lipstick on the front and again i emphasize shell management keep your selector open cycle your shells based on the target and of course manage your magazine manage your shell cycle you want to have the max amount of shells in the magazine as often as possible to maximum your burst damage that is effectively a burst damage multiplier think about it play it you will benefit so cheers much thanks for watching i hope you found the guide useful i hope you found it enjoyable and i guess now all that remains for me to say is pants off <laughs>